What's going on, guys? It's your boy Woodsy L, coach of the West Virginia Knockdowns here, bringing you my week five match for QDL. Uh, we played my boy Tim this week, who's got kind of a goofy team going for him. Um, anything with Mew, <laughs> I think, could just be goofy because you never really know what is going to be going on. But then on top of that, he has some uh, some goofy low tier mods. I, I like his good high tier mods make like a really solid team. And he just has like a bunch of random ass mods here that I don't even know what they're doing here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I help him prep a lot of the time for his games, and I, I never even know what to do just because like all, all these mods on here are just so whack. Like, what do you even do with all that? Um. Anyway, though, he is a pretty solid defensive core with like Mew, Mandibus, Snorlax. I think uh, Mew, Snorlax is a pretty good pairing because Mew could be a pretty good physical wall a lot of the time, and Snorlax is a good special wall. And um, you could help Snorlax with his resistances and stuff, because it's a uh, fighting resist. And then Mandibuzz is just a good glue there. Could really go either physical or specially defensive there. Uh, as far as Mew goes, I also have to be careful of like a lot of setup sets, um, potentially suicide ha hazards, because he could uh, he could run a pretty offensive team with like screens that are on suicide lead Mew, something like that. Um, and yeah, I mean, you could really do anything. You gotta be, uh, it's hard to, you can't really prepare for Mew. You just have to adjust to it mid game. So, uh, that's what the game plan was this week for it. Uh, Inferno and Toxtricity together are pretty good offensive matchups against me. I didn't really have a, a definitive answer to either of those things. Um, I kind of just had to make predictions and get in revenge killers on them and so forth. Uh, I think I could handle Toxtricity a little bit better than Infernape. Because I do have pretty good, like, Boom Burst last Sludge Wave resist. And I do have uh, a Swampert that's immune to its Electric move. So if he runs a Choice Locked Toxtricity, I could just kind of play around that. And, like, do I think he's going to click Boom Burst or Overdrive kind of a thing. But uh, Infernape, I didn't really have anything at all to cover. It's dual stab, so... It is uh, probably it and Mew were like the two mons that I was the most threatened by. Uh, Mandiba is just a good support mon. Defog, U turn, knock off, etc. Gotta always watch out for Curse Lax. If you let that thing get up, set up a couple of times, it could really sweep any team. Even if you are prepared for it, so can't let it get set up on me like that. Uh, he likes to run a lot of screens to Raladon, but uh, he could also run an offensive set because I think. In some matchups, offensive Duraludon could be pretty good as well. Uh, and then going into his goofy low tiers here. Uh, Behem actually has a, a really good special attack stat, but and it uh, could be a pretty decent trick room sweeper, but it just doesn't really have the uh, the coverage moves, I don't think, to be all that big of a threat, unless you're like really psychic weak or something like that. Uh, Dreadnought is another mon that could be pretty good in the rain, but he doesn't really have a drizzle mon or anything like that, so he would have to manually set up the rain against me. And, uh, uh like, outside of rain, I don't really think Dreadnought is all that big of a threat, which is kind of what I mean by, like, these... His low tier mons are real goofy, like they don't fit in his team at all, like he doesn't have a trick room team, he doesn't have a rain team, so those are just kind of like <laughs> weird fits. Uh, I think Cradilly's a more reliable mon for him though, it could just be really fat, good stealth rocker. I uh, do annoying stuff, set up curse and swords dance even if it wanted to, uh, has recover and so on. Uh, rock spam is always great. Uh, he has Jump Bluff on his team, which I actually didn't <laughs> know he had Jump Bluff until team preview, because, spoilers, he breaks the Jump Bluff, and he uh, he just picked it up in free agency for our week, and I didn't know that because I prepped, like, ahead of time for our game, because uh, this was originally an Oricorio, but generally speaking, Jump Bluff isn't really that good, but it could do a lot of annoying things, so it was annoying against me. Uh, like, it can run Cotton Guard, it can run Aromatherapy, Encore, Sub, Leech Seed, Ameno, um, Sleep Powder, Strength Sap, you know, just annoying low tier grass type mon kind of stuff. So uh, if you're not really like prepared to counter that, it can be annoying, but otherwise it's uh, pretty easy to shut down normally. And then I don't even know what regular low punny does. <laughs> uh, he likes to get creative with it though. I know a lot of the time he likes, he like one time he brought special low punny with like, uh, I think it was Blizzard and then Power Herb, Solar Beam or something like that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he, he could do something with it. Uh, going into my team here, we had a mostly specially defensive Heatran 
uh, just to kind of spread the chip early mid game. Uh, you can maybe buy me some switch ins and stuff. That toxic is just something I can pretty easily spread around. I don't have to worry about getting synchronized by Mew on the toxic since it is a steel type. So it's something that can maybe come in on Mew and get a toxic off if I think he's going to be like a bulky combine bulk upset or something like that. Uh, it could also be a pretty good switch into his other wall being Mandibuzz. Because Mandibuzz normally wouldn't really be able to touch Heatran, and again, I could just spam Toxic on it. He doesn't really have great fire resists on his team, generally speaking. Uh, I think the ones on his team that do resist fire would be Infernape, which gets blown back by Earth Power. And Snorlax would be the other one, so uh, maybe Heatran would struggle a little bit with Snorlax, but otherwise it's a really good check to his walls. Uh, moving on next, we have Choice Scarf Tapu Bulu this week. Uh, he does not have a great fairy answer. In fact, I don't really think... I think his only fairy resist is Toxtricity, who isn't really a good resist, and gets blown away by high horsepower anyway, so I kind of planned on just bringing this Tapu Bulu to spam player off a lot of the game and to give me some speed control. Uh, in addition, we have just Wood Hammer and Horn Leech coverage because Wood Hammer could give me that extra power boost because normally Play Rough would not be too hitting KOing something like a physically defensive Mew, so Wood Hammer would be able to do that. Uh, it could also maybe help me break through a Snorlax that has a curse up or something like that. And then Horn Leech just has the final move in case I want to get some recovery off on my attacks or something like that. But uh, I think generally speaking, Bulu's mostly just going to be clicking player off the whole game. Uh, in addition to him not really having a great fairy resist, he doesn't have anything for dragon types. He's extremely dragon weak, which is why I'm bringing mono dragon move Haxorus with sub and dragon dance. Uh, dragon claw just in case I don't want to lock myself into outrage, but I think a plus one outrage really just kind of <laughs> takes care of whatever it wants to do on his team, especially with that dragon fang item to boost his dragon type moves. Uh, substitute, just in case he has, like, physically defensive Will-O-Wisp Mew or something like that. I, I just really didn't think I even needed all four of my move slots this week, so... Just having, like, utility moves that can maybe come in handy in certain situations, like, uh, Substitute or Dragon Claw, in case I don't want to lock myself in the Outrage, I just thought could be nice. Uh, moving on, we have Assault Vest Armaldo. Armaldo coming off the bench this week, making its debut. Uh, with that edge quake coverage plus X scissor and rapid spin. So this is my remover this week Hazard removal uh, edge quake really hits this entire team as a I mean edge quake usually hits pretty much everything Anyway, and then I have that extra X scissor cover Coverage just in case I want to use this thing as like a mute check or even a behem check if I need it I could use that X scissor to hit those things more super for super effective damage uh, I think generally speaking, Armando's just a Mon that kind of beats everything on his team 1v1. I don't necessarily think it's going to be a monster in the matchup just because it is so slow. And it'll be able to get chipped down pretty easy, but I think like this thing on the field with full health against anything on his team with full health, I think Armaldo wins that battle one on one. It could also be a pretty decent boom burst slash sludge wave switch in for Toxtricity. Which, uh, like I said before, Toxtricity is one of those mons that I think I can maybe play around, but it could also be a threat. Like, I have uh, Heatran, especially Defensive Heatran and Assault Vest, Armaldo for those, like, Boom Burst slash Sludge Waves. And then I do have my Ground Type and Swampert, and uh, even Tapu Bulu. Actually, I have three Electric Resist slash Immunities if he wants to go for the Overdrive, so it is something I think I can play around. Uh... Next up, we have a offensive support Greninja. I think uh, I mostly have this thing for speed control, but also in order to click spikes. I think spikes hit a large portion of his team, and then uh, something like Dark Pulse is really a pretty spammable move against his team, even though he does have uh, a couple mods that could eat Dark Pulses really well, like Mandibuzz and Snorlax and such, but that is why I am carrying the Toxic. And then uh, Water Sure it can just to be able to have that priority coverage on my team if I so need it. It can hit the Infernape if it wants to come in on a Dark Pulse or something like that. And uh, I think there's a pretty good chance that he brings Scarf Infernape because I do have the uh, the threat being of like bringing a Dragon Dance Axers, which I am. And uh, Scarf Infernape would be able to outspeed plus one Axers and maybe Revenge Kill it. So I do kind of expect him to have 
Scarf and Furnape, so that way uh, if I have Water Shuriken, I don't have to worry about getting outsped on surprise and like getting Oko'd by close combat because I could just kill him with Water Shuriken instead. Uh, and then we have the Wise Glasses there just because uh, I didn't really even know, I didn't really think Focus Ash was necessary because I didn't really think Greninja was ever going to be getting Oko'd. Because uh, if it was, I probably wasn't going to keep it on the field. So I just kind of threw Wise Glasses on there to get a little bit of extra chip on this stuff. Uh, and then we have Physically Defensive Swamper to round off the team here. Uh, mostly just there if he wants to run a Physical Infernape set. Um, I was still a little bit scared about that though, because Infernape can be running Grass Knot. Even if it is physical, it could run like mixed coverage grass and not, but that was really the main reason I brought Swampert this week. Also to get up Stealth Rocks and then, you know, just do regular Swampert stuff as always. It just clicks Toxic, clicks Stealth Rocks. Uh, high horsepower is a move with that I could hit all the stuff that doesn't get Toxic. Like I could, uh, or vice versa, like how Mandibuzz wouldn't be getting hit by high horsepower, but getting a Toxic off on Mandibuzz is a uh, something that could be crucial. So, with that, we'll get into the battle here. And uh, he does pretty much bring, like, all of the uh, the mons that I was threatened by, plus that jump bluff that I was saying, because uh, <laughs> I didn't really know what to do against the jump bluff, because I didn't prepare for it. So that was something that I had to, that and Mew were something that I had to, like, figure out halfway through the game how I'm going to deal with those two things. So I kind of had to adapt as the game went on. Um, but with my lead here, the things that I was most worried about going into this matchup were Toxtricity and Infernape, and I figured that Swampert would be a good lead to potentially get up rocks on one of those two, because I'm not really that threatened at full HP by either of those two, as he does lead the Infernape. Uh, I do click Protect on turn one just to scout if he was carrying that Grass Knot, but as he clicks U-Turn on turn one, I figure he probably doesn't have it, so I just get up my rocks here as he U-Turns out and do his Mandibuzz. And uh, on the chance that he clicks Defog, I don't want to let him just get that off for free, so I'm going to get a Toxic off on him, but he's just going to decide to trade Toxics with me. But that's okay, because I uh, I really value those rocks being up for the game, I think, just to have something like a, a late-game Hatcher sweep in place. Uh, I go into Heatran here, which was uh, my designated Mandibuzz answer, I think, and maybe Bulu as well could have been, but he knocks off my leftovers, which is unfortunate. And I do miss a Fire Blast as he reveals the uh, the Tech Bone Rush to hit my Heatran with. And uh, this turn did kind of suck because uh, not only did I miss my Fire Blast, which would have done about over 40%, and I could have just probably protected and got the Toxic kill here. But he gets all five Bone Rush kill or hits. So I almost died that turn to the Bone Rush, which uh, <laughs> good on him for bringing the Tech. I mean, that was, that was nice. But uh, I do land a second Fire Blast, and we trade our Mandibuzz for our Heatran, which I was kind of okay with, because I didn't really think I needed Heatran all that much this week anyway. Uh, I go into Armaldo on the, uh, the Revenge, because like I said earlier, it kind of just beats everything on his team 1v1. And uh, I know that I could Oko that Infernape with an Earthquake. So I decide to click that as he does go into Jump Bluff and reveal it to be Heavy Duty Boots. So I go into uh, Bulu so that I can't get Leech Seeded or Sleep Powdered or anything like that. Scout what kind of set he is going to be. As he reveals to be Sub Infestation. Uh, <laughs> I think the set that he's about to reveal is like what could have been the worst case scenario. Because I do still do a lot to this thing with Play Rough. And I am faster than it so it can't just spam Sub on me. But he has that Strength Sap. And uh, I think Trap with infestation and then strength sat me down is uh something that i kind of struggle with with the team that i brought he could really beat a lot of stuff on my team with that especially because it is faster than everything other than the greninja and uh greninja can't really do all that much damage to jump off anyway so he does just kind of stall me out here with strength saps until i'm doing no damage and he decides that he gets my attack down low enough that he could go into toxicity on the play rough, but lucky for me, uh, I do get the crit and still get a bunch of damage off on the Toxtricity, ignoring those attack drops. And uh, I figured that his safe play there was to just click Boom Burst, because I thought Swampert was a pretty obvious switch in at that point, so I do go into Armaldo instead, and really take almost no damage from Boom Burst and pick up a kill with Stone Edge. Uh, he does go Infernape to Revenge Kill. 
I thought even as low as Armando was, I could potentially get it in to get off a big hit later on, like on the Mew or something like that. So I do switch it into my Swamper, thinking that really all that Swamper's doing for the rest of this game anyway is checking Infernape. So um, it does its job there and gets me that free switch into Infernape as I just click high horsepower on the Snorlax. Uh, he reveals to be leftover Snorlax, so after he gets a curse off here, I assumed that he was going to be like a rest talk set with leftovers or something like that. So thinking, or maybe I click, yeah, thinking that he was going to click rest that turn because I would have been able to two hit KO him from there. I go hard haxers to try to take advantage and set up on it, but he does just click body slam how heavy. So I take a lot of damage on my Haxers for no good reason there, which is really bad because Haxers is probably my best win con in this game. Um, and at this point, he could go into his Jump Fluff and lower my attack with a Strength Sap to be able to take an Outrage pretty well. Uh, I have no option but to stay in here because I am locked in the Outrage, and we do get three turns of Outrage, unfortunately. And uh, this Jump Fluff actually couldn't touch my Haxers if I got a sub up. So I was thinking I could maybe get a sub up on this jump puff and set up on it, but because I was confused, I didn't really want to risk uh, getting a sub up and bringing myself down to 15% just to kill myself with confusion. And uh, I was minus two attack at that point anyway, so it would have taken me a while to set up properly. So I just switched out, but he takes that advantage of that to get a substitute up. Uh, I just went Swampert because I thought he could have potentially doubled into something else that turn, like maybe doubled into Mew started setting up so I wanted to go Swamper because it covered the Infernape double and even if, if he did go Mew I could get a Toxic off on it. But he does just opt to sub up as I go back into Haxorus but he reveals that his last move is Leech Seed on this turn which again is bad for me because I don't want to get a sub up if I'm Leech Seeded because I would just die that turn. So I switch back out into Greninja knowing that it's the only thing on my team that's faster than this and it doesn't really care about getting Strength Sapped. So, uh, after knowing that his last move was Leech Seed, he couldn't really touch Greninja either. Uh, I'm gonna go into that and just start spamming Dark Pulse. Uh, I actually clicked Toxic this turn because I thought that was the better option to long-term deal with that Jump Puff set. And I do get the Toxic off the Mew, which is normally nice, but he does reveal to be Lumberry. So, all I really did was Toxic myself. And, uh, I'm gonna be taking a lot of chip from Toxic and Leech Seed, so I wanna get out of there and go into my Armaldo, who is pretty low. Uh, I didn't really know what this Mew wanted to do, so I figured I could either A, sack it on the attack, or B, get a big X Scissor off if it was trying to set up or click Stealth Rocks or something like that, so. Uh, he does just kill it with two Drain Punches, and uh, I decide to go Haxorus afterwards. I click Substitute just because I didn't know what this Mew set was yet. He reveals to be Bulk Up, but if he was like a, a defensive Will-O-Wisp set, I thought that Substitute would have been a really nice play, and I even with him clicking Bulk Up, it didn't really hurt me that much. Uh, and with his plus one defense, I do not two hit KO him with Outrage, which is why I went for the Dragon Dance there, because uh, if I clicked Outrage, eh, he could uh, potentially just spam Roost. And uh, I would kill him until I killed myself in confusion. So I wanted to guaranteed get like that 70% damage off rather than just be doing like 45 damage and him potentially just being able to recover it off over time. So I accept the fact that I am going to trade my Haxers for 70% on this Mew. Uh, so I could go into Greninja here to revenge kill. I could click a Dark Pulse on this Infernape. Which he is Scarf here, so he probably thinks that he's going to outspeed me and pick up a KO with like a close combat. But I am carrying the Water Shuriken, so I do get the kill on the Infernape, which is nice for me. Uh, and at this point, Infern or, uh, Greninja looks great against his team, but I do have to be careful because that Toxic can start racking up. Uh, I go for Toxic here, thinking that again, I, I need something that could long term check this Jump Pluff. But I do miss it as he doubles back in the Mew. And uh, I had to switch out that turn, I thought, because I was eventually going to be dying to Toxic Chip that turn, and I did really need my Greninja to get the Toxic off on Jump Bluff. I go into Tapu Bulu here to try to start getting some damage off, but I do miss the player off. Probably that one didn't matter as much, because uh, he was just going to get all his HP back with Strength Slap anyway. But knowing that I don't want to get trapped by this thing again, I'm going to go into Greninja. And again, click Toxic on this thing because I really do need to get a Toxic on it. 
uh, as he traps me with the infestation. I know this is the last turn I'm going to get with your ninja, but I do get that important toxic off on the jump bluff as he clicks substitute. And uh, I do go down to two infestation damage. So he is behind a sub now. Uh, he could. I, he really is a, th a threat to me at this point. Uh, he is just going to infestate my Bulu and trap me in and try to strength, sap, stall me. But uh, this play rough was a roll, I think. I don't know what his set was, but if he was just max HP jump bluff, uh, I think it guaranteed killed. But because uh, he had a little bit of physical defense, I guess, uh, I know he's was pretty fast because he was outspeeding my Haxers, which was, uh, yeah, I think it was Jolly, yeah. And it wasn't max speed, but it was pretty close to it. So I know he had to have a pretty good bit of speed, so he couldn't have had that much defense, so I don't really know what that roll was. It might have been a mid roll, but it might have been like a mid roll too, I don't really know. But either way, he does live the player off with 4% and get the strength staff off and just get all of that HP back. Uh, I'm trapped in here, so all I could really do is continue to spam player rough and uh, hope that the toxic chip starts coming into play here. Or maybe I could get a crit or something like that. Uh, so we are just going to kind of stall out here a bit until my infestation runs out. I'm just going to keep spamming player rough as he keeps spamming strength sap because he can't really do any damage to me other than with infestation. Uh, so, you know, this goes on for a little bit until I finally get untrapped. And I do double into Swamper just because I want to get my uh, my attack drops off. So he makes the play in the Mew. Uh, so he could get a Roost off on my Swamper. And I know that I'm not going to be doing enough damage to really threaten this thing. So I get the Toxic off onto this Mew. Rather than double into Bulu because I didn't really think I could go with Bulu at this range. So he does keep clicking roost but I, uh, high horsepower is doing enough damage I think that uh, he has to be pretty wary of the toxic chip and uh, knowing that I predicted that he was going to go jump off here on the high horsepower so I go into my Tapu Bulu and this was a big play because uh, after the toxic chip here I am able to kill with play rough at this range so uh, I, I think if I didn't make that play I probably lost the game straight up to this jump bluff because it would have just stalled me out. I would eventually die to like infestation and toxic chip on both of my mons and never really be able to kill this thing because I can't really touch it. But uh, because I did make that play on the switch, I am able to cl land the player off and kill the jump bluff. And uh, at this point, I'm not going to be killing with player off on this Mew either because it is pretty bulky, but I'm going to be doing enough damage that he can't really get healthy on me again thanks to that toxic that swapper got off earlier so i am just going to keep spamming player off until he eventually decides to just click brave bird and get his kill on me and die to uh that toxic damage which great game to tim uh i didn't really even think that i was gonna win until like the last couple of turns there whenever i made that double on the jump bluff so uh very good game i probably very easily could have lost that on just one turn uh, I mean, there's just a lot of Tapu Bulu playing clicking player off. I noticed at the end of the game, it clicked 14 player offs. Like, I, <laughs> out of 51 turns, 14 of them were just Tapu Bulu sitting there clicking player off and never even clicked another move. But, uh, yeah, great game to Tim. Uh, again, we squeak by with the skin of our ass staying undefeated. Another very close game. We have, like, I think three now that I just just barely won, but we are hanging on to that undefeated streak to stay five and zero. Oh. Uh, I think we are second in the standings behind my guy Seth, who is running the league. And you could uh, he actually also uploads, so you could check him out in the description. But yeah, other than that, uh, we will see you next week in week six against Dustin, and see you there.